Hi, I'm Jerry the Snake Man, and today I want to welcome you to Snake Clips. We're doing episode four, which is our corn snakes. Please stay tuned. Corn snakes are also known as red rat snakes, and they are the largest, powerful, and non-venomous constrictors. All snakes, including corn snakes, have been persecuted by man out of his ignorance. The corn snake is an example, as they are often killed because they resemble a copperhead. But the more we learn about snakes and the less needless fear we will have about them, the more we can appreciate their beauty and their usefulness. Corn snakes, other rat snakes, and even the copperheads are beneficial predators of rodents which can spread disease and damage food crops. In fact, corn snakes got their name from the pattern that is on their belly. If we look at a normal corn snake, and we have quite a few corn snakes in here today, we're going to show you here. This is a normal colored corn snake. And as you can see, he's beautiful, but if you look at his belly, he has these black markings on his white belly, and they actually resemble Indian corn. And that's one of the ways that a corn snake got his name. The other way corn snakes got their name is that farmers, when they harvested their corn, they kept their corn in these wooden silos called cribs. And the cribs attracted a lot of rodents, and of course the rodents attracted a lot of corn snakes, because the corn snakes like to eat rodents. The farmers were very appreciative of the fact that the corn snakes were there because they kept eating the, the mice and rats, which would damage their crops. The average adult corn snake will grow to between three to six feet in length and a period of about four years. However, they are always growing. They never stop. A snake will grow its entire life. There were snakes which are called amelanistic snakes, and that's what this snake here is, and this other larger white one, whitish one here. And a melanistic is when this snake actually does not have any of the black, the darker pigmentations. So it retains the red and the orange and the whites, but it doesn't keep any of the, um, the dark markings that you'll see on the normal color corn snake here. Then you have other corn snakes that lack different kind of patterns. As you notice, all these corn snakes here have what they call saddles, and that's what these are, these markings here. But this corn snake, which is trying to escape over here, he doesn't have those saddles. He's actually striped. And this big guy really wants to escape this little snake pit we got going here. And he has these stripes on him here, as you can see. So they can lack their patterns and stripes. These are called morphs. And morphs are something that when you breed them, this will breed into the next generation. Corn snakes have a range. They're basically from New Jersey all the way down to Florida. They'll go over toward Mississippi and all the way into Texas. Corn snakes are snakes that eat mice and rats. We've said that already. And we mention that though is because the way they eat them is they will lunge out, grab them with their teeth. They have um, up to 200 teeth, all needle-like and curved toward the back of their mouth. Um, when they grab a hold of something, they are um, embedded onto those teeth, and as that prey tries to pull out, it just gets embedded deeper and deeper onto those teeth so that it can't escape. At which point now, the snake, once he grabs the, the prey, the mice or the rat, he will wrap around it extremely quickly. He will squeeze it until it suffocates it. They don't crush their prey. They actually squeeze them until they stop breathing. At this point, the snake will locate the head of the prey, and he will start to swallow the prey whole. As he gets it, he will use his teeth to walk it into his mouth, and as he gets it into the throat muscles, he then will allow those muscles to pull it down into his stomach. Um, corn snakes are not aggressive snakes normally. They make extremely good pets. The only thing with the corn snake, though, is that if he does get threatened or aggravated, he will rattle his tail very violently. Now, by rattling his tail very violently, sometimes he acts and he sounds like a rattlesnake. And this normally will ward off a predator. But in case of a human, though, acting like a rattlesnake sometimes will actually just get you killed. Um, when they do this, it's a way of them telling you to leave them alone. But if you continue to pick up, a corn snake may strike at you very violently. Now, these kind of snakes, though, are generally non-aggressive. As you can see, none of them are trying to hurt me or each other. Um, they're very beautiful snakes, and um, they come in all different colors and different patterns. 
Now we have one more corn snake we want to show you here. I'll have to walk away to pick it up though. And as soon as I get it over here, you'll understand why I don't have it in the bin here, the little snake that I have with the rest of them. So just wait one minute, and we're going to grab that snake for you. And this is a beautiful snake as well. It's a different kind of snake, though. Um, a snake that you wouldn't normally see, because this snake is a special kind of snake. This is called... And here we got him out of here. We're going to bring him over here. Now he's a little jumpy, because this snake is actually blind, though. This snake is called a jungle corn snake. And a jungle corn snake is actually a crossbreed between a corn snake and a uh, king snake, a California king snake. Now, since king snakes do eat other snakes, it's one of the reasons why I didn't let him in here by himself with these guys. Because I wouldn't be too sure that he wouldn't decide to make a meal of one of these guys. Now, he's not blind because of the fact that he is a jungle corn. Um, he was given to me, he was one of our adoptions, our rescues, and he came to me already blind. So I keep him because I feel that he doesn't need to uh, be readopted. He's got a good home now, and he's going to stay with me until he dies. Although he's blind, he still uses his other senses, his tongue, um, to pick up all the smells. He's very good at eating. He doesn't stop eating just because he can't see his prey. He smells it, and he will strike out and grab it very quickly and eat. We put him back real fast, and then we're going to get right back to these guys here. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is when I said he was one of our rescues and adoptions, and so was this little guy here. He was one of the snakes that was brought to us because people couldn't keep him no more. Um, this snake is also one of our, our beautiful corn snakes. It's a melanistic and it's also up for adoption. Um, we rescue snakes and we give them a, a better home to somebody who actually wants to keep them and take good care of them. Sometimes people do take a snake and they um, don't anticipate what might happen. We've had snakes come to us through the hurricanes um, where people had their houses destroyed. They no longer could keep the animal. But we do have people though who get snakes and simply just get tired of having them. So before you commit to having an animal or a snake, you should actually make sure that you're committing to keep it for its entire life and it's not just a passing fancy that you want to keep for a couple months and then you want to give away. Um, these snakes are great snakes for children. As you can see, they're very docile. Um, they don't get an extremely large size. This, this one right here keeps trying to get away from me. Um, is, is a typical size for an adult. Like I said, they can get up to six feet, but this is more of the size that you'll find them at. Um, we thank you for watching this episode, and if you have any questions or comments, we please ask you to email us. Our email address is uh, gaboonsnake, it's G-A-B-O-O-N-S-N-K at yahoo.com, or you can contact us through our website, which is www.jerrythesnakeman.com.